his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. And Lot pictures one that is in the world but not of the world. And every day what he suffered every day was a vexing. And, and I can relate with that. I'm sure that you can relate with that. But all of us that are saved, in essence, that's what we are. We are brands plucked from the burning. Right. And uh, for some, uh, the fires of sin and temptation, it got a bigger chunk of the heart, got a bigger chunk of the life than others. And I'll say this, there is an advantage when you're a brand plucked from the burning and the fire took so much from you. Uh, and, and that tends to be there's a greater appreciation on the part of those who have gotten so close to the fire and it took so much from them, there's a greater appreciation for the deliverance uh, that they've experienced. Uh, I remind you over there in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was asked to eat with one of the Pharisees and, and Jesus went to his house and ate with him. And there was a woman in the city, the Bible says, that says she was a sinner. And she heard how that the Lord Jesus had went into that Pharisee's house, and when she knew that he was there in the house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment there and stood at his feet behind him, and she was weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears, and she wiped his feet with the hair of her head, and then she kissed his feet and anointed his feet with the ointment. And, and the Pharisee watching this said, If this man were a prophet... He wouldn't know what kind of woman that was that was touching him, for she's a sinner. And at that moment, Jesus called this man, Simon, to him, and he asked him to do something. Of all things, he wanted him to make a judgment for him. Now, the Bible said, well, you know, you're not supposed to judge, people say, but, but wouldn't well, you know what? The Lord just puts him on the carpet and says, i got a judgment for you to make. And, and the Bible says that uh, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. This is the Lord speaking. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one to whom he forgave most. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Amen. And so he makes a correct judgment there. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears. Lock them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with oil. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Amen. Now, what happens in that passage or what not doesn't happen in that passage, the Lord doesn't play off that woman's sins. He doesn't say, well, she's not all that bad there. He doesn't water down her past. And neither does he seek to lump all that the Pharisee would have been guilty of uh, in there with her and say, you're just as bad. He didn't do that. But what he does bring to light is he brings to light the fact that she loved him more. And he brings that to light there, and he shows why is because there was a great debt that she'd been forgiven, and all those sins which were charged against her, uh, she loved much because those sins were removed that were no longer between her and the Lord. And friends, let me say this tonight. In this congregation, there are just sinners. All of us are forgiven much in the sight of God. Uh, but when each sinner gets a load of what God has forgiven us for, as God describes what is the, 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 the depths and the sin of our hearts and our minds and our mouths, and, and we begin to discover in the Word of God what sin is. Not just what men say sin is, but what the Word of God says sin is. We realize what a great thing it is to be forgiven. Amen. And how much we've been forgiven. And friend, I don't care if you were saved at five years old. You ought to love him much. Amen. All of us are brands plucked from the burning. We're saved from outer darkness. Amen. We were headed for hell, eternal damnation, where the worm doth not and the fire's not quenched. That was going to be our eternal home. And we realized that there was only one way of escape, and we believed on the one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he saved us from that terrible place. And we've been forgiven much. We've experienced a great salvation. I don't care. If you were saved young, old, if you were a drunkard, a, a dope fiend, a fornicator, a prostitute, doesn't matter, friend. All of us have been forgiven much. Amen. We have reason to love him much. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that coming to God by him, seeing 
He ever liveth to make intercession for thee. I like what it says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. It asks the question, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? As he mentions this salvation being great, amen, I'll say amen to that. It is great because of its ability. Because this salvation that God gives by His grace has the ability to change us from being a child of wrath under condemnation to being a child of God justified by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Thank God for its ability. And it's also great because of its availability. It's available to whosoever will. Anybody that wants it can have it. Amen. Someone says, well, you can't just get saved any time you want it. I beg to differ with you. Listen, you've got to want it to get saved. Amen. If you're not willing, he's not going to save you. Amen. You've got to be willing, friend. Amen. You've got to be willing for the Lord to save you. The salvation is great because of its reliability. Anyone, anyone that comes to Christ by faith, he says he will in no wise cast out. Amen. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he goes on to say, they will not be ashamed. And ashamed means to be turned away, to be pushed back, to be rejected, to be refused. And listen, no one has ever come, no one, not one case, not one sinner has ever come looking to God for mercy through faith in Jesus Christ. And God said, not for you. Amen. That has never happened. Amen. You're not going to come at a time when he's not ready for you. Amen. If you come for salvation, he will in no wise cast you out. Amen. That's the words of Jesus Christ. It's great also because of its durability. When a sinner gets saved, listen, God does something within that sinner that's going to last forever. I mean, the world and everything else is going to be gone, and what God done for you and I is still going to be there. Amen. We're still going to be enjoying it. It's great, amen, because of its desirability. Amen. What we're talking about provides something for us that none of the other religions even promise. <laughs> but we've got it and more in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, whenever we were saved, it was to the uttermost. And it was a great salvation as God saved us from hell. He saved us from sin. And also, He saved us from this world. And that's something to get a hold of. One of these days, it's going to be fully realized yeah. whenever we leave, amen. We were just singing about when the Lord comes and that shout, amen. Listen, one of these days, that's going to be a reality. Amen. That's going to be an experience for us. Christ is coming and we're leaving and we're going to leave all this world behind. But even now, we need to understand that salvation, the nature of salvation provides escape from this world's pollutions. And the fiery temptations that come with this world. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 3. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and our Father. Listen all should love much. That's a fact. Every one of us that have experienced this salvation in the uttermost. This great salvation, we ought to be in love with Jesus Christ tonight. Nothing ought to ever come between us and Him. Everyone ought to love much. It's just that sometimes those that have been forgiven more seem to realize it more. And because they realize how much they've been forgiven, because of how long they were in the fire of sin and temptation, and how much it took from them to be a brand plucked from the burning, does serve as a certain advantage to them. Because they seem to realize it more than others that didn't get so close to the fire or wasn't in the fire as long as others. There's an advantage there, but there's also a disadvantage. And the disadvantage is whenever there's a brand plucked from the burning that gets too close to the fire again for too long a period of time, it's liable to catch back on fire again. We're talking about this world. You see, I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what was it? The world, pictured as Babylon, tried to burn them. Right, yeah. Try to set them on fire, and those boys wouldn't burn. Yeah. And folks, this I'm talking about how you and I can avoid getting on fire for the world. Yeah. And, and the fact is that uh, you get to hang around the fire if you're a brand plucked from the burning. You hang around too long by the fire of temptation. You're allowed to catch fire again. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in truth, that can be said of all of us. It's just more likely for some than others, but it's not impossible or unlikely for any of us. Amen. You hang around sin and you hang around flirting with temptation, eventually it'll grab you. Yeah. It'll get your attention. It'll take you in a direction you didn't expect to be going. And we're talking about the fires of temptation from this world. And, and you take an individual that has had his bouts with alcohol and, and, and drinking there. He, he shouldn't hang around bars. That's right. And then he shouldn't be in an environment where that's going on. Amen. A fellow that's had a problem with gambling shouldn't be in an environment 
Well, that's taking place. Maybe. That's just common sense. That's just wisdom. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Listen, at some point or another, you've got to realize you're you are, you are helping the devil tempt you in areas yeah. whenever you're hanging around those areas. Amen. Amen. And just, just always having it in front of you. When you know you've got a weakness. Stay out of barrooms. Stay out of gambling parties. Amen. That's, that's somebody with that kind of background. That's disastrous for them. These guys here in Daniel chapter 3, they were fireproof. They didn't catch fire. That fire didn't touch them, and the smell of smoke didn't even get on their clothes. Uh, he got a hold of some mighty men there. We read about that in the passage. He got a hold of some mighty men, soldiers of Nebuchadnezzar's outfit there, because the kind of fire I'm talking about doesn't matter how physically fit you are. Doesn't matter how physically strong you are. You know what matters? What matters is what's going on in that mind. What matters is what's going on in that heart. We talk about what's going on in that mind. Listen, every fall that happens in a person's character is preceded by a long process of wicked thinking. Everybody talks about somebody falling into sin. Nobody falls into sin. They think about it. Yeah. And they weigh it out. And they plan it. And one day the opportunity's there and they jump on it. Yeah. And that's what happens. The, the wheels get to turn and we want to excuse ourselves and act like, well, I just fell to it. No, you didn't fall to it. You jumped. Amen. You dove in. Temptation got a hold of you because you hung around the fire too long. Amen. And you got passionate about something that was wrong. Right. Something that would sever your fellowship with God. You see, it matters what's going on upstairs. The kind of thoughts you're, you're entertaining. It matters where your heart is, where your affections are, where you set your affections. Uh, what we find of these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were, again, Hannah, Mishael, and Azariah, there's some things that will help us about being a, avoiding being on fire for the world. Amen. Because we talk about getting on fire for the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, that's, that's one thing, ultimately, that we need to understand. If I'm going to avoid getting on fire for the world, then I need to get on fire for the Lord. Right. And we talk about being on fire for the Lord and getting fired up for the Lord, but there are some things, uh, there's some brethren, rather, uh, that they're on fire for the world. They're clearly fired up for the things of the world. They got around, as I said, the flames of temptation, and, and for some, they were brands plucked from the burning, and they got too close to the flames. And it's not always the alcohol and the drugs and gambling and things like that that burn people in sin. For some, it's just sports. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was just kill a good Baptist meeting, but it is. Hey. <laughs> a big orange country. I'm not, I'm not against the big orange, but you know what? Some folks probably ought to stay away from it. Yeah. Right. Because they obsess about it. I mean, if the, if the balls are winning, they're up. If the balls are losing, they're down. And it just affects everything about their life. There's nothing wrong with most of us sitting there watching a the game and so forth and so on. But there's some folks that somehow or another, they identify with that team. They identify with that athlete. And that athlete to them represents them, and they represent that athlete. And it's not healthy, and it's not scriptural. Amen. You, know, uh, you know, the big T on the helmet... For the orange, says Tennessee, and for that reason, I just sued them one every game. Because <laughs> the nation's watching. <laughs> and, I, and anything connected to Tennessee, I want Tennessee to do good. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's not me. Right. Hey. That's not me. I don't know Bush Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any of those players. I don't know what they believe. Amen. 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 I don't know what they feel about the Lord, what they feel about the Bible. Right. You understand? Hey, you know, I, I don't want to see them lose, but it ain't, I ain't going to have a broken heart if they do. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's a good thing, too, because I'm in mean, the last dozen years. <laughs> Am I sure glutton? <laughs> Amen. I mean, just something like a good sobering thought. You know, sports for some folks becomes an obsession. Right, man. They wouldn't dare shout at church. I mean, they can barely pay attention at church. But, boy, you get them around a ball game, and you find out where their affections are. Yeah. You find out what they're fired up about. They'll shout at a game. Now, again, I'm not talking about this. Most folks, it's just a healthy thing. But for some folks, it becomes them. And it just absorbs them. And, uh, and again, for some, it's other things. It's music. Amen. Music. I could say a lot more about that tonight, but I'm in a little bit of a hurry. <laughs> but some folks say, you know, I mean, they, get, they, they indulge in that thing and it becomes something that the world provides for them. It becomes a refuge and an escape. And, oh, there's nothing wrong with the preacher. Whatever you want to tell yourself. But I'm going to tell you something. Anything other than the Lord for your refuge Amen. is an idol. Yeah. 
Right. Amen. Listen, you're trying to get something out of the world that only the Lord should provide for you. Right. And unless the, the entertainment of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. For some folks, it's not the music necessarily. It's the music.